Our, our, our next speaker, moving along here, is, is Junko Nishikawa, and it'll be outreach activities during the pandemic, strategies for a successful online lecturer. And, and Junko, if you could identify, again, your, your home institution and, and where you're talking from, et cetera, that, that, that would help me, help me a little bit. Yes, hello, everyone. Um, it's Junko, I'm from LC, um, which is an institute at Tokyo Institute of, uh, Tokyo, sorry, Tokyo Institute of Technology in Japan. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having me. May I share my slides? Yeah, please share screen. Yes. Right. So um, I do outreach at LC, uh, um, as Life Science Institute in Tokyo. And today I'd, be, I'd like to share uh, with you our experience regarding the COVID-19 pandemic here in Japan. So LC is an independent institute um, belonging to the Tokyo Institute of Technology. And we are part of WPI program, which is the world premier um, research Institute initiative um, by Japanese Ministry of um, Education and Science. Oh, Junko, did you want to share slides right now? I, we can't see your slides. Okay, you cannot. No. Just a moment, please. Sorry. Yeah, the little green button, and then if you uh, select the window you want to display, it could be desktop or a particular PowerPoint window or whatever the little green box at the bottom of your Zoom window. Yeah. Thank you, Ken Brandt. Sorry about this mess. Can you oh, yeah. see? There you go, there you go, perfect. Yep. Okay, can you see the full screen? It's great. Yeah, right, so, um, our case study is on pandemic. So this is our building and we, we have in, very international um, students and also researchers um, in our institute. Here at LC, we, held, uh, we hold, um, we have many public outreach activities, including lectures. For the researchers, we um, frequently do lectures um, called LC seminars. And also um, the big flagship lecture for us is the LC annual public lectures. In Japan, um, held, holding an event annually is a very um, common way of um, doing events. This is part of our traditional um, program structure. So um, even in, in during the pandemic, we were um, meant to hold the annual lecture. So um, together with our um, partners at uh, WPI Institutes, we also have joint lectures. Um, we all organize events together. So let's have a quick look at the pandemic situation in Japan um, relating to the event operation. This chart um, was created by PTIX, which is a company that provides online platform for event announcement and um, booking system. So you can see what's uh, going on you, and you can also buy tickets online from this platform. So it's um, obvious that the number of physical events decreased dramatically um, in spring and Instead, these were replaced by online events. Tokyo was under uh, the state of emergency um, declared by the government from April to about two months till end of May last year. So this was the period um, when we all had to rethink how to approach to our audience. So um, traditional events at university held 
it was held usually in the university premises. Um, we use the lecture halls of within an university building. And these were always um, managed and organized by university staff ourselves. And we expected audience from um, Tokyo, um, within Tokyo and from the neighboring prefectures. Um, the common way to come to our event was uh, by public transport. Well, um, we had to change the, the scheme and we had to move on to online um, platforms. So um, the first thing we had to we faced, the first challenge we faced was to partner with a live stream company. Um, uh, an online event definitely requires technical expertise and finding a reliable uh, live stream company was a key. It was a new experience for us as uh, outreach practitioners, but it was a new um, thing for, for them as well. In Japan at the time, many event management companies jumped into this live streaming support. So it was kind of uh, um, trying to find out what's best for from both of our, our sides. So in terms of the audience, naturally, geography doesn't matter anymore. So you have um, more audience from outside of Tokyo and also from um, abroad as well. I, uh, I have to say that it was not an easy shift, especially for us in the non-public sector, uh, I mean, non-profit sector. I um, try to see how uh, the 13 WPR institutes um, held events, online lectures, uh, and held lectures in general in during the pandemic. And you can see there's a big vacuum from spring, March, uh, spring, autumn uh, to towards, yeah, spring, summer towards um, autumn. So this period was dedicated to to adapt to the new environment and to discuss what we can do and to find the new solutions. So first thing um, I'd like to point out is that Zoom fatigue that you have, we have to um, deal with. Um, it means that you get too tired to, to the screen for, for a long period. We noticed this um, phenomena from a very early um, stage of the pandemic. Um, how? Um, because as I um, mentioned before, we had the um, lectures, seminars for the um, researchers, which was a, which, which we hold in a smaller scale, but very frequently. And we moved to online very quickly compared to other universities in Japan. We started to work remotely from the 1st of March and all our events moved online on the 1st of April. So we gained experience by um, running these um, smaller events and we prepared for the bigger events later in the, in the year. We came up with a lecture program which uh, considers our audience. First, we limit uh, one lecture length to maximum two hours, um, which was um, often much more less. And like this conference, we also um, allocate uh, um, breaks effectively so that, that people don't get too tired. Finding budget is another um, challenge. But um, to, in order to overcome this fatigue, it is really uh, important to think about the quality of the online streaming, both in terms of sound and visual presentation. So, um, and also um, by offering many functions online, you can engage with the audience better. Mm -hmm. So this um, annual public lecture, um, one of our flagship event, we um, had this from the beginning of our institutes, uh, which was established in 2012. Unfortunately, unfortunately we, we don't have data before uh, 2015, but you can see a general trend that the number of um, participants has increased. 
and we have we got the um, highest um, number in in the latest event, which was held online. So continuous trust building over the past years is one of the elements to gain an audience, but uh, we believe this is not the only one. So for example, um, in terms of promotion, we try to adapt to the new environment. Uh, one of our tasks we employed is to, to target our target audience on, on social media as um, to think uh, by thinking their lifestyle. We really wanted to uh, let younger people join our lectures. So we, and we know that they don't look into the online devices in the morning. So we scheduled our posting as an um, social media posting um, in the afternoon and also at night so that they can um, move, it, so that it's more approachable for them. You can see the screenshot here, which is from um, uh, Hootsuite, which we use to schedule our social media postings. Traditionally in Japan, we uh, hand out, we print out the handouts to promote events. Even now, we use papers, and um, we used to send an one A two size poster to schools in Tokyo. But uh, since the pandemic, we um, proactively offered them a downloadable poster as well, uh, because we realized through the conversation with teachers that during the pandemic, um, especially the schools and school teachers got more access to online devices and they appreciated uh, digital materials more than ever. So they, and they, they can put, provide the information easier to the students. It is still um, rather common for them not to have an email address um, from their school. So we also um, try to contact the schools and teachers via phone and also, well, we use also emails. So the direct, through the direct communication, we um, got to know the situation where they are in. Um, since the pandemic, uh, since the state of emergency in last spring, where all schools were closed, they um, were really in a new phase. So at, especially at private schools, they um, tend to close schools and they then tend to move to, um, they tend to move the le uh, lessons online. So as a result, we see less students at school. So we lose the opportunity for them to see our posters. So we decided to give them an extra A4 copies, a smaller size of posters to the teachers so that, um, which is more handy for them to distribute the information. More importantly, we also uh, like to point out that the uh, importance of evaluation of uh, activities. At LC, we developed the um, outreach evaluation framework where we assess the knowledge and understanding of the audience and, and the skills, how they build up their skills through their lectures and events, and whether they liked it or not, and how they valued the uh, um, event as uh, including other um, elements for assessed. So um, all these um, evaluation assessment is very important to see the outcome and also um, to build your um, future events. Here's one example example of a comparison um, of the annual public lectures. The one in the eighth uh, public lecture was held in February 2020, which was uh, just at the beginning of the pandemic. So it was uh, in-person lecture. And we held a 
six months ago, um, the ninth public lecture, which was the latest, and it was online. So we ask uh, the audience to fill in the questionnaires right after the event. And we see that the, um, there's a slight shift in the age um, distribution. But generally, all age are covered, all age in range are covered um, in both lectures. But we see that the um, younger people, we have a bigger proportion now for the latest lecture. And we also have more female participants um, in terms of the size of the proportion in the latest lecture. So we always ask whether um, they have, um, one of the questions we ask them is um, whether they have um, joined the LC public lecture before. And we see that uh, new audience have been attracted and joined the event in, in, in the latest lecture. And part of the reason could be that it's online. And uh, we also see uh, there's a, a space where you can um, write your uh, comment freely. And um, we see that they appreciate that the, uh, the fact that it's online, especially during the pandemic, that because um, you don't want to go out and because it's online, you can come to the lecture. Um, I see um, many respondents uh, share the similar comments. So they feel, yeah, and then um, we also have the question whether they prefer the face-to-face -face lecture or they or online. And actually the preference of, for the type of the event varies. Those who really don't want to um, be online or those who prefer online, but uh, there are some reasons for that. Um, as I um, see those who live outside of Tokyo, they really appreciate to have um, the chance to be exposed to an academic um, scientific um, experience. Because um, outside of Tokyo, the chance was really limited. Whereas because of the online shift, they have much more opportunity to join and to, to experience. So as a result, we see that they, um, that degree of enjoyment um, is still very high, even if it's online. And the satisfaction level has been kept, um, even if it's online. So to summarize, um, we, uh, I just um, have this uh, list up of three points. So first, uh, you need to keep updated with the new environment and the environment changes all the time and you, the technology um, develops every, every minute. So you have to understand what's good for, for our audience and what's, uh, what's uh, preventable, what, what we can do for them. So we, we, we try to be flexible and try finding the most so suitable solution to, to meet the um, um, audience wish. And uh, we always don't forget to evaluate our, our activities, which will be beneficial for us and also for the audience. Thank you very much. Great. A round of applause for Junko. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you very um, much. Wendy. That's very inspiring how you were able to be so effective during the pandemic. What a lesson mm -hmm. for all of us. Thank you. I don't, are there any questions for, for Junko right now? Well, <laughs> I, again, like a, a, an important question for our, one of our last speakers was how did you succeed in the pandemic? And it seems, how about that? It seems, would you say you've learned enough and you're succeeding more because of the challenges? You have new tools and new ways to reach people? Yeah, sorry, um, we have 
Could you please repeat the question? Oh, I mean, it sounds like you've opened up a new a new regime of outreach that <laughs> seems very powerful. Thank you very much. Yes, we we try to 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 be so. Yeah. Yes. Well, that, that's extraordinary. Okay, let's let's thank Juho again. <laughs> More claps. Okay. Yeah, keep up the great work.